Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast, go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream, happy sewing. Hi! Hello, hello, hello. I'm so sorry. I am so late today. I thought I'd scheduled this appointment on Tuesday and I really needed to go to it. So I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't figure it out till last yesterday, like at four o'clock. I was like, oh shoot, that's this week. <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that. I don't, I'm never usually late like this. So um, usually it's just 11 a.m. Pacific um, when I schedule a stream. You can count on that. And then I have these surprise streams occasionally, which then nobody will know about, and they just kind of happen. They're usually later in the day, so we can catch more diverse time zones. So hello, Monument. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm Sarami, and I have a feeling we might have a few new folks here this week because of the podcast, the Love to Sew podcast, which was really awesome to be a part of. Um, and you can see I had that little intro. So one of the things, if you're new to live streams, I want to tell you about is at the top of the chat window, there's a little toggle. It says live chat or top chat, and we prefer live chat. Then you don't miss things. So we're all learning about things like this too. I'm more adept at using live streams on Twitch as a as a viewer than as on YouTube. So, um, hello Florentine, how's it going? And feel free to lurk if you want. You don't have to chat at all. I cannot see who's there or who's not there. Nobody can. Don't worry about it. You, it's told, or you can use your anonymous account. I know it's a little nerve wracking, you know. But at the same time. Please feel free to ask me whatever you want, um, sewing related. <laughs> and let me know if the how the sound is, because we had some sound issues last week and everything looks okay. Feel free to shout at me in chat. There's also a delay. So if you ask me a question or um, you want to know more about something, don't say, why say why blah 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 say a complete sentence because of the delay occasionally i won't know what you're asking why about so it's just one of those things like twitch there's hardly any delay youtube there's a significant delay so um like right now on the screen right now you're seeing the beginning of what i was just talking about so <laughs> i can see the chat <laughs> so anyway i'm new um i'm and this is i'm not new but um i'm this is kind of a new to me as well. So I've only been doing this a couple years. So let's see. I told you guys we'd be making the Annie cardigan this week, but I really do need to get these kids jammies done. And I figure why not? Let's just do it together. It is a free pattern, which is kind of cool. I actually don't have a picture of the pattern, which is kind of funny. This is not what we're making. I don't, I didn't even print out the instructions because they're pretty simple, but I'll show you a picture tomorrow. And there's one on the thumbnail but it is the kids pajama bottoms by five out of four patterns. I've never sewn one of their patterns before. So this is new to me. 
this will be kind of cool. And I'm going to be sewing these with the serger. And I'm going to also be attaching the elastic using the serger. I have a dedicated video for that, but it's going to be kind of cool. I, I've never done it live, I don't think. So this will be great. I think I did it once, actually. I did it once live kind of um, spontaneously, but I don't remember what what thing that was, what project that was. We've we've done a lot of videos and a lot of projects, a, few hundred, a couple hundred or more now. <laughs> so sometimes I kind of forget what we've done and where we've done it, and the repetition is always great. So... My niece and nephew picked out these fabrics from Spoonflower, so my niece picked out these little cats. And my nephew picked out some D&D inspired gaming stuff. And I promised them um, slippers because the slippers I made for them. Yeah, right Penny? Isn't that cute? And I think it comes in different scales size-wise Penny because I remember when she said these are what they picked and I looked, I think it was Oh, maybe it was my niece. Whatever she picked was kind of gigantic. So just look at the scale. They may have a different couple scales. So um, so we made the cozy slippers by Blank Slate Patterns in December. We usually do this annual thing where we'd have this week-long streams of gifts to make that we hopefully are useful. And we did the cozy slipper pattern because it's free. I try to do like a lot of free patterns during that week as well since we're already buying all these materials for all these gifts. And uh, they came out beautiful except the kids couldn't get them on <laughs> so um that was a major fail and I, I posted that on instagram and what happened was the fabric i used wasn't four-way stretch she doesn't specify that in the pattern so if you use that pattern it's a great pattern uh there's two notes about it and one of them is that on the let's see on the sole pattern piece mine's printed on cardstock she accidentally printed the same exact thing for the upper slipper um, and she printed it on the sole. So you only need two outer and two lining for one pair. And I'm using non-skid as well. So really, if you don't want to do yourself, you could do the cozy interior as one and then the non-skid as your other. I'm doing all three because I didn't think ahead. So... Hey, Malin. Malin, I know it's kind of late for you. Hey, Ray. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Allison. I know I'm sorry about being a little late today. <laughs> yeah, Allison. Oh, I ordered, I just, yeah. Oh, I'm glad, Malin. It was super fun. I didn't sound nervous. <laughs> Actually, they're so easy to talk to. I wasn't nervous. Um, I was nervous about my headphones because the funny thing was I needed headphones that were plugged into my computer. I have a great microphone, um, but I don't. I don't have headphones that plug into my computer. It was that was the tricky part because I, I have gaming headphones. Now you all know I'm a gamer, <laughs> um, but they're wireless. And I had an older set of gaming headphones, and I was like, oh, I hope these work, and um, and that I could remove the microphone on them because the microphone you can hear it when I move it. So, oh, I'm so glad you guys. I, it was so hard not to tell you guys. Because I know um, you guys are just such a great sport. So it was hard to keep that a secret. They didn't really tell me to keep it secret, but I figure it's smart, a smart thing to do. You never know what could happen, you know? So anyway, so yes, we are making kids jammies. Also, let's go over the epic amount of things I'm going to be sewing here in April. It's not epic, but I don't know what... Wait, okay, wait. It's not this one. What is it? This one here. All right, is everything sound okay? Because I had to set this up after all those crazy things that happened to me last week. Oh, awesome, Beverly. Well, it's only March, Beverly. I mean, it's April now. Wait, what's today? It's, today? it's only March. Oh my gosh. Okay, so April, what happened? Like, why is this huge? So I know I have a little bit of March and a little bit of May on there. So, and I also told you I'd be making this Annie card again by So So Deaf. Um, I'm gonna do it next week. So this gives you time to get this. It's a free pattern. If you sign up for the Melanated Fabrics newsletter, I'm pretty sure you can still get it as a free pattern. It came in my inbox. It was kind of a surprise. I don't open every single email, but I do try and open most because especially for companies I support, even if I can't buy something from them, I open their email newsletters because that ups their um, rating in their newsletter like 
the engine they use like i use mailchimp and it's really weird you guys like i I'm probably never talked to this about this because i don't really care a whole lot about it but mailchimp has like a star rating for each person who subscribes to me and i realize it's their engagement so it's it's like if you don't ever open email like i saw all the <laughs> all my friends that had been on my newsletter list like from like 20 years ago, um, I booted them all off because they were just being nice. They signed up for a newsletter. They don't open it and I could tell they never opened it. You can actually click and see which, which newsletter people open. <laughs> so um, I booted them all off because it costs me as well and I know they didn't notice and they're probably like, oh, phew, I don't have to unsubscribe to her finally, you know? So for people I support, I always open their newsletters just so that it helps them and their mail their their like newsletter service is like, oh okay, you're doing good. You're not you're not just signing up people who don't want to be on your newsletter list, you know. But I opened this one and there was a free pattern in there and it was just a link. Really um, you know, generous. And this Melanated Fabrics is a company by Mimi G and Brittany Jones, right guys? You guys help me out with this. <laughs> Oh, they did, Malin. Oh, cool. Okay. Yes, I know, Barbara. That's so funny. I mean, I just love that so many of you came from so long ago from Love to Sew when I advertised on there like a couple years ago. So, so anyway, um, okay, so are you saying that, Malin? Yep, got it today in relation to the newsletter and this pattern because that's awesome to hear. So someone in Instagram said, oh, I signed up and it's still there. So anyway. This is knit style cardigan. I'm gonna make mine shorter. This long length looks a little too chic on me. I, I mean, I'm just not chic, you know? I like something a little more varsity. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for varsity and I'm gonna do it in this really great fleece. All right, um, the next thing I have, I'll be doing is the Yanta overalls because I'm gonna make shorts and I'm making those in uh, non-stretch denim so they're gonna be like classic overall shorts I kind of want something for the garden you know when I don't need my full-on Blanca flight suit garden coveralls perfect Malin thank you for confirming that that's awesome yeah so that's great I think this will be a really quick sew I'm kind of like you can tell I was kind of torn on making a part one part two so I do have it still on the Saturday the 10th Oh no, that's part. That's the that's the sewing. Never mind. I moved it over, so I don't have anything for Wednesday the seventh, because normally we would cut on Wednesday, sew on Thursday and Saturday, and I don't want to put this whole project on weekdays. I'd like the sewing to at least be on a Saturday, so if more folks can catch it if they really want to join in on this. Saturday's just better for a lot of people I know. So we'll have to come up with something for next Wednesday. Yeah, right, Malin? That's what I think so, too. And it'll give me a chance. Maybe I can get the, um, like, an overall kit, the hardware. So that'll be fun. I have tag buttons. I just don't have the, you know, thing. So, all right, so we're doing that. Uh, then we have a sponsored stream by from Hearts Fabric. And this is a new pattern company called Personal Clothing. Can you see that? Personal Clothing. And this is the Texas top. It's a wrap top. You can see on the back, there's the sketch. And do you see this little hangy downy bit? That's like the underside of the wrap hanging down. So I actually thought this was an extra piece sewn on there, but it's not. That's the wrap hanging down. All right. And then we'll end the month with some Dawn jeans. I have this really great mustard denim. I got the whole kit from Needle Sharp. Um, so this will be fun to making a non stretch. Are these button fly? They are, right? Yeah, button fly. I've only ever made one other button fly pair of jeans on camera, and that was probably my only second pair of button fly anything in my life. <laughs> so that'll be fun. I really enjoyed that. So we'll see. That'll be good. All right, so that's our epic April. Plus, we have these kids' pajama bottoms I'm going to cut today and sew tomorrow. And then I got to get them to my parents like ASAP because they're going to go see my um, niece and nephew and sister. So, all right, let me put these all back in the right spot. So I have my bins sitting right here. I spent a lot of time on this yesterday. Like doing these calendars takes so long. Finding all the graphics, taking pictures, all that stuff. So, all right. 
So I'm gonna make shorts for my nephew. I only bought one yard of fabric because originally I just wanted to make slippers. And I was like, God, a fat quarter. A fat, the th problem with spoon flour for me is, and I'm a huge fan of spoon flour. You'll hear me talk about it a lot. I just really love the idea and the capability of it. Um, let's go back to my pattern table. So my thing with spoon flour, the only thing I don't like is that fat quarters cost the price of a half of a yard. So you might as well either buy a full yard or wait until they have their half yard, their half yard, wait, half price fat quarter sale, and then you're getting a fat quarter for the price of a quarter yard. I don't know how long it took me to realize that that's what I was paying. I just would buy a fat quarter because I'm like, oh, I don't want all this extra fabric. So I kind of was like, oh, fat quarter, I don't think that's enough. It would have been, and I just didn't, you know, think of it. So on the empty Wednesdays, perhaps something about fitting that, that's a good idea. I could actually put a muslin together. That's smart, Melon. I like that idea. For this Saturday, I just kind of was like, you know what? Maybe let's do a Q and A. I don't know what you guys think about that, but um, but we could do some sort. I've never done that, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to maybe do some like, hey, will you troubleshoot this for me? Maybe we can help Penny do her cuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> I promise I'm gonna make that video, but I'm kind of busy right now. So, okay, let's cut these. And my, I'm just gonna, I'm kind of embarrassed. I lost my blades for my, my, my rotary cover for the big ones. So my blade might be a little dull. So uh, I don't advocate for that at all. I'm usually the one that's like, change your blade, any sign of dullness. But I also have rep repetitive motion issues that I feel like. That would aggravate it, you know? All right. This fabric is the four-way stretch. So I think that this is not modern jersey. I think this is performance. It's very lightweight, but it has four-way stretch and a lot of it. You could make leggings with this pretty easily. I got one yard. And this pattern comes in a ton of sizes. So I only printed out the sizes I needed so you can see barely there's a purple line here and a pink line here and so and I show you how to do this in the printing PDFs video so on that video I show you if a pattern has layers and you don't want to print all sizes because this one's like infant to size 14 youth there's easily 14 sizes in this pattern and it would have been a lot of lines. So I only printed out my niece, the size six and the size 14. This is, uh, why don't I have a little thingy? I'm pretty sure this is the performance. Um, what's that stuff? To, let me get my spoon flower kit. It's right here. Well, let's see. I'm scared to touch anything right now because everything's shocking me. <laughs> I was in there with my chair. All right. This is not the sport lycra. This is the cotton spandex jersey. It's not the performance PK. I wanted a four-way stretch. Yep, it's the perf cotton spandex jersey, which you can can't see. I have the I have that kind of blown up as far as the lighting goes. Sorry about that. So, um, and I wanted that for the slipper. So I should be clear: this pajama pattern is for a woven, not a knit. <laughs> and I, I'm so used to thinking of it as a knit because I'm doing it in knit, but it is for woven. But then it'll be fine. So yeah, it's the cotton spandex jersey, tons of stretch, prints really nice. I'm not sure if you did a really, if you printed a really dark print, you might be a little underwhelmed with how that really dark color, like a black, will hold up over time. And I also think like if it stretches too much, you might see like white, you know, because the print is on the surface. So yeah, anyway, wait, what did you say Beverly? 
Yeah, you can think of qu questions. I was thinking that's Saturday, Beverly. Yeah, and I, I'm just kind of open to like, let's do some, I don't know. I'm, I had three holes in that massive schedule because I don't necessarily like cutting on, I didn't want to add one whole no, another project. That's, I'll be honest. I didn't want to add a fifth project to April. A sixth project. It would have been a sixth project. That's just too much. <laughs> too much stuff, you know? And, you know, some of these are just a little simple to sew because usually we do that part one, part two. You never know. Maybe we can drag out one of them. All right, so my strategy with this is um, I'm cutting my niece on this cat print. And it is a nighttime print. It is so cute. So my strategy is actually, I'm gonna butt the, the pattern all the way up to the edge because this line right here is straight. So technically you could put these on the fold, but then you can't do pockets the way we're gonna do it. <laughs> Allison, that's awesome. Hey, Mrs. Necro. Oh, you didn't? Well, sometimes the YouTube notifications are kind of untrustworthy. So like I said, this is a um, woven pattern. They're just kids jammies though, no biggie. I'm gonna make sure my grain line, which didn't print on this pattern piece. But if you don't have a grain line on pants, it's a perpendicular line to your hem, just so you know. And, and this one right here, this was the uh, tape together line. All right, my only feedback is I had so much trouble taping this pattern together. These little boxes were really hard to line up. I found it really uh, tricky. So, but it looked like this pattern got a good review on her site. So I'm just making sure that that green line is parallel, especially with knits. I don't want any torquing. And I already lined it up at the other end. Hopefully it stayed that way. So, hey, Elena, how's it going? Yeah, they have been weird. I think Andrea from Soda Fit has said the same thing. I've heard a few of her viewers saying, I never get the notifications for when you go live. All right, so let's just see. I'm just lining it up parallel. And then uh, we'll cut this out. So you can also add a draw cord waist if you want. I'm not going to. Not for any good reason, except that I just didn't plan it, so I don't have any draw cord. And I'm, I'm going for it now, I'm cutting. <laughs> I kind of already planned this out because I want to also, so this is, can you see how straight this is right here? Just round that. It doesn't need to be straight like that. I think I've seen that before in a pattern program I've used, and it was because I didn't make those curve points. So. Took my recycling bin home. Whoops. All right, I'm gonna notch for my pockets right here. So here's the little draw cord marking if you're going to put a draw cord in. If you want to know how to do this, I know I do it on the Caroline pajama bottoms and the, the first time I made those. So that's one of my oldest videos. Hey Donna. Oh no. Um, hey Mafia, how's it going? Oh, it helps to set the notifications to all instead of personalized. You know what? That's actually a really good tip. I'll bet you're you're right in that. I'll bet that's it. It doesn't like having to be picky about it. So I'm gonna see what chat says, Donna, but I've had that happen too. And what's the fabric that it's stuck to? Do you say that? No, you don't. So what I think you can do is probably warm it up a little bit, whether you use like a press cloth, maybe from the back or something, and then try and rub it off. Like get it kind of gooey, <laughs> you know? All right, so that's hers. 
So the reason I'm pushing these all the way to the, um, let's cut all this paper off so we can see what we're doing here. Is because I need space for the slippers I'm cutting out and the pockets. I may not, I may not have room for the pockets. There we go. So we want this line is actually parallel to the green. There's the green. Oh, you do I think you have it as all, Mrs. Necro? Hmm. Gooby gone. Is that okay on fabric? It is, right? I've used that stuff. I've I've definitely had that happen. On my wool mat, it doesn't stay. It's great. It's a lightweight denim. Okay. Yeah, I think you should warm it up a little bit, maybe with your iron or whatever. Don't come in contact with it on your iron because then you'll have two problems. <laughs> I just did that the other day. And then um, I would try and rub it off. Maybe even use a press cloth to kind of rub it off while it's warm. So this is interesting. The The shorts says it has a half inch hem allowance, but that's, that's more than a half inch right there. I'm not sure if it meant you're turning it a half inch twice, which is still a one inch hem allowance. So... This one has a much bigger than one inch and has one and a quarter inch. So I'm not sure why it says one inch hem allowance when the allowance is actually one and a quarter. It's free pattern. I'm not complaining, you know? This was a spontaneous make for me. I don't mind buying patterns at all, but I have plenty. And I thought, you know, I feel terrible that the kids' slippers didn't work out. The photo my sister sent was hilarious, though. Um, and uh, I thought, I'm just going to make them some jammies, too. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mrs. Necro. Oh, there's still some left. Is it too much to suggest using a nail file or a sandpaper? Yeah. I may have done that before. <laughs> You know who would be excellent at this? It's my old assistant, Rayanne. She was so good at MacGyvering this kind of thing, that kind of stuff. All right, there's my um, notch. I didn't cut off a lot there. Why is that notch not there? I'm doing this at the most awkward angle possible because of the camera. These are the back. There's no back notches. If you want them, you can put you know a little double notch if you want. All right. Oh, there you go. They weren't too small, Mrs. Necro. But they wouldn't stretch to go over their foot. <laughs> so, um, and it doesn't say, I went back and looked at the pattern because I'm like, this is crazy. What did I miss here? I did, I you know, because I was like, oh, it just says use fleece. Now, not all fleeces are four-way stretch, and so maybe she said to use fleece because she thought that, but they're, they're not. And I couldn't find fleece. I tried. I couldn't find it anywhere near me. The only place I could find fleece was online. The only place I could find four-way stretch fleece was in Canada, and I had to buy a one-yard minimum, and it was 58 inches wide. So it was this massive amount, and it was going to cost me $50, in, including shipping, to get it to me for two pairs of kids slippers and so I was like Arr! so I ended up getting um the super fuzzy stuff god I don't even remember where I got it from but I am I okay so if you're new here <laughs> you have to know one weird quirk about me is that I don't allow <laughs> this is gonna sound like I'm totally crazy but um I don't allow fake fur or burlap into my sewing studio because it is the gift that keeps on giving and I can't stand it. So I just, ref I even with clients when I was freelance, I was like, nope, I don't sew. I won't sew your prototypes in that because <laughs> more people ask for that than you think. And like burlap would just make me itch for months. And so I just stopped take doing it. But this stuff, it's not fake fur per se. It, it's like fake sheep fleece and it, it's like dog bed material it's so flippin soft 
Um, it took me forever to find it. It's not four-way stretch though. I thought it was. I looked everywhere for something like this that's four-way and it's not. So it's, it's got a lot of stretch going this way and none going this way. So my strategy is that this is the slipper. I'm going to put the stretch going around the top of the slipper, this is the toe. So this is what the slipper looks like. And there's two of these. And this is like a little cuff. So, and then I made a right angle right here for this batch to try because I found that this was really tricky to turn. We're, so it's a trial. So I'm still putting my niece and nephew through experimentation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Polar fleece. Yeah, that's what it said. Exactly. I know. Super cute. Yeah, and my local st store had um, minky, but it was all in pastel baby colors. Pink and baby pink and baby blue and yeah, yeah, you know. All right, so I need to get some pockets. And for her, I'm going to do this smaller line. And for him, I'm going to do this bigger line. So let's just kind of map this out. Let's see if I can get all of what I want to get out of this. I don't think I can get, oh, can I get my pocket? Wow. Okay, so I might be able to get my pockets just in that. And so I need four of these, two of these, right arm. All right, so we're good. We're good. If you make this cozy slipper pattern, in my video, I show you how I sized it. So I actually use my printer to resize these. <laughs> Not, I'm, I'm a trained pattern drafter and grader, but that was so much easier. I just did a percentage. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, um, rib knit you could use for cuffs. And you only need it to stretch crosswise. That'll work. And you, you don't have to have lengthwise stretch on like a knit tank top, probably. Like a rib knit tank top. All right, so there are some notches at the back here. I'm probably not gonna sew the slippers on camera, just because we've done that already. Maybe I'll save a pair. I think there might be a little swearing involved, though, just because of the fuzzy stuff, you know. But, man, I really want to buy more of it and make some new, like, closet case floor poofs for dog beds. But with the top being that stuff, oh, yeah. My God, Loki would love that. All right. I have a separate bin for my slippers. So I have enough to actually put this this direction, which is kind of fun. But let's make sure I have my pockets before I do that, because I don't actually need it. Thanks for subscribing, Janice. Look, I changed my alerts. Aren't they cute? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mrs. Necro. Do you need, oh, look at all these new subscribers. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Look at them all. I got the, um... Alert sounds. You guys heard that this time, right? <laughs> I might have to turn it off. <laughs> I didn't think about that. We can turn it off. Where is it? We'll turn it off for a bit. Thanks for subscribing. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So let's do, let's do my nephew's pajama pattern. Or what I could do is just make a photocopy. That's what I'll do. I don't know why printers have to ask you 5,000 questions now. I just want you to print it and that's it. I'm a is that who that is? <laughs> I don't even know who it is. <laughs> All right, let's lay out these. So I've already cut my nephew's slippers out.
Oh, let's do the right green line here. So now I have a pattern piece for each of them. And we still need to cut out these two from here. I pick things up as I go, but I'm pretty messy in general. My new studio is uh, small enough that it kind of keeps me honest, you know? All right, so I realized for him, I wasn't gonna be able to make pajama pants because he's size 14. I I'm not, sh sh personally, I'm not sure about sh like shorts, pajama shorts like this, but I mean, honestly, I think it'll be kind of cool. And maybe I'll get a couple of white t-shirts to give them. <laughs> I don't know, Barbara. <laughs> Mrs. Necro, you need to teach us. <laughs> All right. So same thing. This line is straight. It's, it's kind of rare for a side seam to have no shape at all. But my suspicion is that there was plans to make this all one piece like this. And then someone said, ooh, but pockets. And you have to have a side seam for most pockets. So if you don't want a pocket or maybe you want to do a pocket in a different way, you could get rid of your side seam. And like I said, this is a pattern for wovens. It'll be fine though. Oh, really, Mrs. Necro? That sounds cute. I'm right up at the edge of the table. Can you see? Right up at the edge. My table's only 30 inches deep. Oh, okay, okay. I can upload my own little thing, but honestly, I had so much trouble last week. You guys know, because you were here. I don't know what happened. I, the app had uh, updated. And even the guy I hired, I ended up having to hire someone to help me. And even he was like, dang, I, I actually tried everything. And um, he recreated it on his stream setup. And he said, yeah, it's doing it online too. And so then we were kind of doing these weird workarounds. And so then when I got it set up, I was like, all right, don't poke the bear, right? Okay, it's all Gucci. So, and then I just like use the same ones that they have in there. So. <laughs> you know, when people ask me what my favorite cartoon was, it was Danger Mouse and no one's ever heard of Danger Mouse. Have you guys heard of Danger Mouse? He had a little mole as a sidekick and he wore an eye patch. He was a white mouse, and he and he walked on two legs. Um, and uh, like you do, you know, when you're a superhero. I don't need this pattern piece. This is the front. So selvage is pretty wide on spoonflower fabric. So just make sure that you don't accidentally, um, there was a time where sometimes they would print up to one side and the other side was wider. Then you got into danger territory because if you didn't line these up, then you'd kind of be really bummed you had cut the selvage out, you know? Like selvage was on your project. One thing about spoonflower fabrics is everybody tries to use as little as possible because it does cost a bit more. But you can get whatever you want. I just uploaded 24 new designs. I'm so excited. They're going to come in the mail soon. Pinfold! Yes, Helen! <laughs> yeah. Penfold. It was big here. Yeah, he had a British accent. Yes, Penfold with a yeah, E. I caught that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually when I 
cut um, with a rotary knife. I'm always making sure that actually the project is to the blade side like this. Rather than the way, what I just did here was the project was on the back side of my blade where I can't see. But it's just a camera thing. It's a little hard for me to see what I'm doing without bending over it. So. <laughs> Danger Mouse. Oh my gosh, I love that you guys have heard of him. Alright, we'll put a couple of back notches. So I traced off his pattern, but I didn't see the notches for the pocket. I'm not too worried. As long as I have them on the front, I can transfer them to the back right here. These say 3 8 inch seams. Kind of. That's also what made me think it was for knits, not for knits, for woven. So I can too, Helen. <laughs> I think my friends were really into Inspector Gadget at the time. I don't know. And then my brother and sister came along. They're a lot younger than me. They were really into um, Ren and Stimpy. I, they thought that show was so funny, but man, that show creeped me out. There was this one on um, the dentist and teeth. <gasps> they scarred me. <laughs> you know? All right, so we have uh, her little pants, his little shorts, ready. Let's cut out their pockets. I've already cut out his uh, slippers. I'm, I wasn't sure if I'd get his pockets, but let's see. You need four. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. I, I have a feeling this pattern was meant for knits because look. Stretch. I'll bet this was a legging pattern. You know? Actually, let's do both at the same time. Knits are so funny, aren't they? Is this one way? Am I doing this upside down? No. It's fine, right? Oh my gosh, I just got, I just had a little panic attack. Let's move this a little closer to me. Anyone here play Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> my cousins wouldn't let me when I was growing up. I had three boy cousins. That was the closest thing to siblings when I was a kid I had. And they were, you know, I was the girl and I was young. And we had to watch what they wanted, you know. <laughs> I loved so many. Like, uh, I also really loved uh, Gidget. And I always, I like, I got really kind of sad when they stopped share, showing uh, reruns of Gidget. And, you know, Gilligan's Island, it was like Gilligan's Island and Gidget. Oh yeah, Critical Role, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, is like, there's this Dungeons and Dragons campaign on Twitch called Crit Critical Role. And it's pretty entertaining, I have no idea what's going on though, but, you know. All right, so there is notches here, and I'm just gonna tell myself they're about the at the juncture of the seam line. I'm not too worried about it. Really, the notches on the pant are usually more important because hopefully they're there to indicate the opening width, and that's really all I care about when I'm sewing pockets is the opening width. So yeah. I was just thinking like, should I have maybe adjusted this pattern so that it'll be easy to surge that whole thing? Let's hope so. Hey Louise, how's it going? How are you? All right. Let's see, we think I can get 
both these here. And we're only going to be, um, what happened here? What happened here? Let's just repair this. So has anyone else made a pattern from five out of four patterns? Hey, May May, how's it going? <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Rosie and Jimmy too. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, exactly, Mrs. Necro. I know, and I, I actually, I've heard people like during lockdown went and watched their first campaign from the beginning. May, I bet you know what we're talking about. We're talking about Critical Role. Because me and May met in a Twitch stream because we both share our love for a particular game. And one of the actresses who does the voice and all of the gameplay is one of the people playing in Critical Role. Oh, you made their adult PJs. How'd it go, Mrs. Necro? Yeah, isn't this cute? My niece picked this out from Spoonflower. All right, so let me, I was taped back to, and let's get rid of this other size here that we're not gonna cut so we can stay focused on what we need. Let's see here, how close am I cutting it? Pretty darn close. So maybe we'll do one of those here, one of these here, and one of these here. Yeah. And then we'll have it. Oh, really? It's the first time you heard of 5 out of 4. You know, um, I've kind of heard of them, but like I said, I haven't sewn any of her things. And I, I have to be honest, if you asked me one of her, like, really popular patterns, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I wouldn't be able to know. Like, you might be able to say one, and I'd be like, oh, that's them. Okay, cool. It's really hard to keep track of all of the different companies right now. All right, so I'm just making sure that I'm on there. And let's see, I still have room for this foot. The foot. These are just a fun little surprise gift for the kids. So, I'm um, having trouble getting to this little like right angle here. So I'm just gonna use these scissors. And this is how I do a lot of interior corners. This isn't the best example, but um, what I do is I clip in there and then <clears throat> I'm gonna peel up the fabric. Four layers is a little tricky, that's why I say it's not the best example. And then I can move forward. I do a lot of things that have interior corners, so you'll see me do it. Especially with a rotary knife, they can be kind of tricky, you know? All right, now we just need our soles. Yeah, exactly, May. I mean, it's entertaining, but yeah, I feel like I came really late to the game. Yeah. Oh, they were roomy. They do look a little roomy on the kids in the picture. My nephew measured the 14, or he was in between, and you know, I was like, growing kid, I'll just size up. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, probably should put the, the draw cord in, but I don't have one handy. And that way he can kind of cinch it up if it is a little big. He's a tall kid though, I'm really hoping that's also why I think the shorts will be great. Because I was like, oh man, if anything, if I did pants for him, they'd have to be long. And I didn't have any extra fabric. It's kind of funny in your mind, you're like, one yard will be plenty for kids' PJs. And yeah, no, that, that wasn't the case. All right, so now we have her jammies and his. Maybe I would find a t-shirt pattern and make them some little white t-shirts too. So 
So I'm going to sew these using my serger and I'm going to attach the elastic on using the serger. So I love doing that because then the elastic doesn't twist inside the casing. You know what I mean? So that is really key. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice, May. I'm sorry you're not feeling good. How's your ukulele classes going? She's teaching ukulele, amongst other things. <laughs> oh, you did your yours without elastic? So meaning the draw cord is in place of elastic? Oh. I didn't know that that was in place of it. I didn't read the directions through. I just thought it was an optional thing and you added it in addition. You know what I mean? All right, so we have these. And then I'm going to also show you again. So these are the pants. These are gonna go together so quick. That's why I thought, oh, making two of them, no problem. This is probably it would be a really good thing to do on our week in December when we do gift sewing. I hate to say it, but <laughs> yes, May, <babe>, exactly. <laughs> you get it. Yeah, this fabric looks okay right other direction. I was a little worried. It looked upside down to me for a minute there. It doesn't look upside down to you guys, does it? I'm hoping not. It'll be cute. Oh, okay, you didn't have elastic, yeah. I mean, you could put in a few rows of, oh, sorry, the 8th, April 8th. Could you put in two rows of a uh, draw cord? That'd be kind of weird, you know? Yeah, plenty of room, exactly. How are you doing, Ray? <laughs> okay, so let's let's see here. This is a really quick cutting amount, huh? It's not even been an hour. Let's look at our April schedule one more time since a few of you have joined. <clears throat> it's this one here. Where's my mouse? There it is. All right. So next week I'm going to be cutting and sewing the Annie cardigan. It's a free pattern if you sign up for the Melanated Fabrics newsletter. It comes right into your inbox and you click it and download it. All right. Okay, good, Ray. I'm glad to hear that. Exactly. Okay, good, you guys. I think it was just the angle. I was like, wait, this looks right side up to me and I, these are upside down right now, you know? All right, so we're doing this. This is knit. This is what I'm gonna do mine in. It's this uh, kind of a, I wanna say vanilla fleece. It's kind of a charcoaly gray heather, super soft. It's a merino, really warm and soft and yummy, very bouncy and stretchy. I don't think you need something very stretchy for this at all, but I am doing a, the size large. I think I'm gonna do the size large, mainly because the hip looked a little narrow. It's shown here buttoned closed, but I felt like I wouldn't be able to button it closed and it hang kind of grazing my body if I did the medium. So I'm gonna do the large. So, so that's next week, you have time. I'm using stash fabric I've had for a while. Um, and then after that, we're gonna do the Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet. I'm gonna do the shorts version. I have a sneaking suspicion. I'm gonna want five pairs of these. I love things without waist. That's why I wear a lot of dresses. You'll start seeing me start wearing dresses only when it gets hot here. So, oh really, May? Why is the five so critical? I was wondering why it was so big. It is. Interesting. Or as my friend says, interesting. <laughs> they have the commands. What are you gonna say? <laughs> I'm just gonna do non-stretch plain old denim. It's um, kind of a medium weight, but I'm kind of thinking this will, I wanna say I'm gonna use these in the garden, but watch, I'm gonna start wearing them to work. Well, the fleece is amazing. I got that from 
Needle Sharp. So Needle Sharp is a subscription box company. And I had a subscription with her for like a year. The first year I streamed, actually. It was great. If you really like everything coming to you that you need, the needles, buttons, zipper, pattern, interfacing, everything you absolutely need for a project, it's really great. And she's really good at picking up fabrics. I think you get three choices of fabrics. And there's lots of boxes. I'm not I'm not a sponsor or anything. Sponsored for, by her or anything. <clears throat> I just really liked it. But then she sells her fat leftover fabrics. And they're at a pretty good deal. And she's so good at buying fabric. And I got that from one of those sales. So. Alright. And then um, is the next one the Texas top? Yeah. And then we're going to do this one's Hearts Fabric sent us the Texas top. And I've got this really amazing Brussels washer linen in purple. Ooh, can you actually see how dark? It's so pretty. I really love it. It's gonna be kind of hard to show on camera, but it's a pretty simple pattern. I think that is a one part sewing as well. That's why I have that extra like Wednesday available there. This company is called Personal Clothing. And I don't know why, but they told me that they came only in one size. The sizing is pretty limited, I will say. That it goes up to a 44 inch bust and a 48 inch hip. And I really like having patterns that have a better range. But maybe what she said that she meant that there's like a few different ranges. I'm not sure. So I'll learn more about that for you guys. I don't think there's anything on the sheet they sent me. So... But they are just, it's a brand new pattern company and they're starting to carry those. And then I'll be ending the month on some jeans. We love sewing jeans. Well, I do. <laughs> oh, the five is an eye catcher. Got it. Okay. Yeah, right, Elena? It might be. I'm trying to get better at repeats and hi, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it bends my head a little bit. So I'm going to do the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen Patterns. That is a non-stretch, uh, high waist, obviously. Yeah, Melan, I think you're right about the fitting. Maybe what I could do is move the Texas top to Wednesday, Thursday, and we could do the fitting of the Dawn on the Saturday before. I think that's a good idea. I may adjust that. So I'm looking at the week of the 21st. So that Wednesday to be determined, we could do the cutting of the Texas top, sewing it on Thursday the 22nd. 24th will fit the Dawn jeans. So that takes care of one of our empty Wednesdays. If we don't come up with anything next Wednesday, I'll probably not stream. I'll probably make an uploaded video. So. Do you, Helen? Um, I made her uh, ash jeans and they actually fit me really, really good. But those are stretched in as well. So these are button fly as well. Yeah. So those will be fun. And I have this really great mustard denim. So I bought this from Needle Sharp, this whole kit. I just was like, oh, my mom got me a gift certificate for my birthday last year in May, <laughs> a long time ago. And I was like, I need to use this. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do in April. It's kind of an epic list. It'll go by really fast though. The leg cut. Let me read the, the description. Classic high-waisted rigid jean pattern. Four cuts. So let's see, there's four cuts. And multiple lengths. Tall, regular, and cropped. And if you look at the back here, can you see that leg difference? I'm sorry about the exposure so high. So it looks like there's skinny, regular, and straight leg. Or maybe regular is straight and then it's wide leg. So yeah. There you go, Malin. Um, pattern features a high rise to sit on the natural waist, button fly, close fit through the waist and hips, and classic jean details. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the view. View A is a tapered leg. Sorry. View A is a tapered leg. View B is a straight leg. View C is a wide leg. View D is shorts. So yeah. I actually might make shorts from this too. <clears throat> yeah, right, Mrs. Necro. Yeah, so this goes up to, it's pretty limited. Waist 38, hip 48, 
I don't know. There could be more sizes for her. I am not very familiar. I've only made her ash jeans as well. And I'm starting to lose track of which companies have added some extra sizing. So I've had this pattern for a bit if it's been reprinted. These are really nice looking patterns, by the way. It's very nice looking. So, yeah. So kind of an epic April. It'll be good, though. And that'll give you some time if you want to join me. You don't have to keep up or anything, but um, you can join in if you want. I need to still get, let's see, I need to get my overall hardware for the overalls. I think that's it. That's, I'm doing pretty good on fabric. <laughs> Curse your large hips. Oh, those would look really cute on you, I bet. Oh, yeah, and I've made the Tanya culottes. Thank you, Helen. That's right. I've made the Tanya culottes, and I loved those. That's what I was going to ask, Malin. There may She may have PDFs in larger sizes. There you go. Ooh, Mrs. Necro. Let's, do you guys want to look at the sizing? Let's look it up. All right, I'm going to show you my computer. I can do this if you're new here. All right, so. There you guys, just got a tutorial on how to do that. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Let's move this over here. I'm not gonna be able to see chat for a second. My screen's pretty zoomed. Oh, uh, maybe not. So the PDF is zero to 20 as well. What's due in stock early April? Oh, looking for curve sizes. Page not found. <laughs> Hey, there we go. 14 to 30. All right, this is awkward. Okay, oh. I think it was better doing this, huh? Okay, let's see if I can get it. All right, so it goes to up to 48 waist and 58 hip. Yeah? That seems better. Where'd chat go? Oh, chat's over here. Thank you, Malin. Malin, you you know everything. Yeah, Ray, I, I realized I hadn't set that profile up. Malin, you, you know, you need to start a, a channel called, like, um, all the news that's fit to hear about sewing. <laughs> you know everything. Finished garment. Yeah, okay. That is pretty close fitting. Look, it's only like a quarter of an inch bigger than the hip there. So there's some possibility for you. Yay! <laughs> I love it when that happens. The landers. Are those the ones without the side seam? Because you know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, so the as far as the buttons go, mine were a kit. Like I said. Do you have any leftover tack buttons from any other projects? Because that's really all you need. Um, you could try that company. Remember I found that one company called, what was it called? Um, that had all the supplies like this, hardware. Oh, there's only two buttons in here. Wait a minute.
I think this is supposed to have a bunch. Notes. Wait, where's the notions? Here we go. Four jeans buttons. Oh, I'm not, I don't have all my jeans, but I have enough. Maybe they fell out. Oh, never mind, never mind. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Here we go. Yeah, okay. We're good. We're good. You know what I love about Needle Sharp is she sends candy. I already ate that. <laughs> That's like the first thing I do. I open and I eat the candy, and then I'm like, what'd I get? <laughs> I've got such a bad sweet tooth, it's terrible. It's really good, but it's terrible. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I like side seams and jeans. Having stretching sex in the straps to make hardware and a stair. Oh, you know, Penny, I think that's a, um, you can also, you don't have to have a hardware. The, the pattern shows you just a buttonhole and button. But I actually think you could do that because when I used to make and sell aprons, I did this like so briefly and I was just like, yeah, plenty of people are doing this. I made the neck strap like a scrunchie. So I made the neck a, um, just one long enclosed piece of elastic so you never had to tie and it was so great with kids i did kids aprons they just pulled over their head it was great and so i think you could do something like that where the whole strap is elasticized and then you wouldn't you wouldn't have to make it look too like much like a scrunchie <laughs> you try keep track of some companies come on you keep track of a lot I like side seams, Ray. I think having... See, the, here's the thing. Let's draw a picture. We need some paper, though. When you have a body, you naturally have a hip, right? If you make pants that are straight on the side... Let's, let's exaggerate this even more. So here's your waist, right? If you have a side seam that does this, what is happening right here? Especially right here, you know? That side seam at the waist, you need some shaping. Absolutely have to have shaping. And yes, I know you can put in, you know, darts in the back and stuff like that, but that doesn't, that's not enough because we all know about that spot in our lower back and the gaping, right? We, almost everybody has to deal with something in their lower back. So that's why I like side seams. Oh, like a halter, Elena? Oh, okay, Penny. What about snaps or um, magnets? Yeah, magnets aren't secure enough. I mean, those super strong ones are secure. But then they, she would stick to other things, and I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, Mrs. Necro. Yeah, what if you did a side zip? Like the, what? who's like that? Who's like that? The Burnside bibs? I made those, I don't remember. Do, do they, Mrs. Necro? A side placket, yeah. Let's look at the pattern. I don't have the pattern printed, unfortunately, but I have a few pieces here. This goes up to size wise. I don't see a side view. This goes up to a size uh, 54 bust, which isn't as critical, but the hips go up to a 58. I only have measurements here. I'm not sure two buttons, one invisible zipper, which is optional. And there's, it looks like there's darts um, right here, unless those are folds. But I bet they're darts for shaping. <laughs> Maybe snaps. Yeah, remember we became pros at that when we did the Kelly Anorak. We did the snaps. Oh, by the way, I have waterproofed everything but the sleeves. 
I have gone over that jacket like three times now, you guys, and I'm going to run out of the bar because I'm overdoing it, I think. But then when it dries out and gets kind of um, cured, I look at it and I'm like, is that covered in wax? And I do it again. And then I start doing the whole thing. My arm was so tired the other day. So, yeah, they have an I exactly, how do I say your name? By Xanacon. By Xanacon. I think that's it. Maybe? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering if they have the side zip because of um, giving you extra, not girth. Well, I guess so. I guess it would be girth so you can get it on and off, you know. Yeah, the scrunchy strap idea was great for the apron. But an apron's pretty lightweight. So if you do that to hold up your overalls, you're going to need something. Where's the back view? You would need something in the back. For all where for all that to go, I'm looking for a good angle. So look at the back view here. You would need something for all that upper part to go. You could you know straighten out the back waist and put elastic back there. You know if it's a kid's thing, I think that could work. I think you could totally get away with that. So and I did that on the Burnside bibs. I made mine back elastic on the bottom. Interesting in the Instagram with true bias heads pants. The person demonstrated that there's a design flaw in the pant and how to fix it. Oh, what is it? Because I made those, but I didn't make them for me. I made those for heart. Oh, you don't remember who posted it, Louise? Ooh. Hmm. Oh, they have darts. Okay. Maybe, do you think that they use the hashtag Louise Hudson pants? That person comparing the Hudsons with the Seamwork joggers. Look, you guys are so good. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to call you guys Instagram stalkers. That didn't pop into my head or anything. <laughs> yeah, I think you could do something where, like, what if the, what if these for kids, what am I willing to draw on? Um, I don't have any paper over here. <clears throat> so I think if these are for kids and they're not a really heavyweight fabric, you could do the back to look more like this. Whoops, I was going to make shorts and then pants and then it just didn't. So these are not the right length for pants, but okay, we're not care concerned about that, right? So what if you got rid of, you know, this and you put an elastic, right? And then it, you know, then it went around to the bib in the front. So the back, and then yeah, your neck was like a little halter scrunchy thing. So that's the back view. I'm so good at sketching, aren't I? <laughs> oh, was it okay? Oh, it was probably on stories. The crotch gets weird. It was a knock me issue. So that's interesting. You're kind of reminding me of something. See, I don't, I didn't have the actual pattern for that. Remember, I only had a tracing on Swedish tracing paper. But didn't we, wasn't I having an issue with the grain line on that? Wasn't I like, why are the, was it that pant that I was like, why is the hem not perpendicular to the grain? Because that would definitely give you a problem. Oh, there you go, Louise. Yeah, if you commented. High rise back, okay. Oh man, to make patterns and today with social media, everything gets just like, there's a lot of information out there. Hmm. All right. So, okay, and then for May, I'm already pulling stuff for May and I'm thinking of, oh, wait, do you see this fabric? I'm gonna do the Lennox shirt dress by Cash Moret and I'm gonna do it in these fishing flies. 
<laughs> I saw Allison of Hearts Fabric wearing the Deer and Doe Aram dress in this, and it was so fantastic. I bought the fabric, and ever since I'm like, what am I going to make out of it? I know it's a stretch, but I'm going to make the Lennox out of it. And then, um, and then I have the Bluette to make by Deer and Doe in this blue floral. So that's two of my May plans. Really, Louise? Yeah. Do you remember me saying? I swear it was the Hudson's. Then I was like, why is the grain line not perpendicular to the hem? Always. Unless the hem is at an angle as a style, your grain line has to be perpendicular because what happens is you get torquing. And then what happens is it pulls the seams across your knee. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet that is it. If that was it, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't um, seen the printed patterns. I only have a uh, drawing. So I just thought maybe that it slipped when she drew the green line. Hi, Terry. How's it going? Oh, Terry. You probably already answered my question. So uh, we have a Facebook uh, sewing group. And I'll just be straight up with you guys. I'm terrible at Facebook. Everybody's welcome to be in there and you can like post a question, your your makes. And so I have a Facebook page and then there's like a group called So So Sewist and you're, anyone's welcome to join it. Um, but yeah, I'm not in there. I don't know how other Facebook groups are, but I'm just going to be straight up. Like I'm managing this content here and I go there and I check it out, but I'm not like saying, here's a challenge for you this month or hey, we're going to do this, you know. So it's just a great place to be with other people and, and, and also private so you can share things. So yay <laughs> oh wow i can't believe that yeah so the other thing uh just as an aside if you're making jeans and you're wondering why there's notches between the, at the knees on the inseam we're talking about the inseam there's notches at the knees and why that measurement from knee to knee like going around the pant through the crotch why that measurement on the front versus the back is different it's because of that to help uh, ease in a little extra and it prevents torquing so you have you can't cut it off you have to do it so it just looks uncomfortable yeah because my very first pair of gingers I just kind of went zoom I was like kind of doing a wearable muslin those famous last words and I sewed from one hem to the other made my rise fit and then I didn't I just try, I don't know what I did but one of my legs the seam touches like if your the your inseam rotates even just like a quarter of an inch you feel it you can feel it on the inside of your knee you know, just drives you crazy okay you do eBay Terry all right thank you yeah so I looked so I looked at the button holder for my industrial and it looked really great until someone in the comments said yeah this is great but it doesn't work if you have the thread snip and then the poster was like oh you're right I just got one of those machines and it doesn't work on my machine anymore and so I'm kind of curious about that but I'm gonna look I, I kind of I'm really into this idea of getting feet now so I want to get that I want to get the um I want to get a buttonholer and a, uh, what was the other one? I'm thinking about a bias maker again. I saw a swing away one on sale, right? But you have to have, the binding has to be pre-folded. We know how I feel about that. <laughs> I mean, I could just pre-fold the binding, I guess. But at that point, I'm just like, eh, why don't I just sew it? You know, like the whole thing. It would just have been a fun thing to have. And it swung away so you didn't have to re uh, remove your feed dogs, you know. Because that's how my other machine was, so... You like my flies? You think it'll be okay? <laughs> so, yeah, that I think that'll. I think I'm gonna have like a, a shirt dress. Eventually, I'm gonna compare shirt dresses because that's one of my favorite dress style. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm probably gonna head out, you guys. I, it's a little later than usual, but we're ending about the same time. Cutting streams are a little bit shorter. So if you want to sew with me tomorrow, I'm going to be making these on the serger. 
11 a.m. Pacific. Promise I'll be here. Oh, okay, Terry C. So that might be an issue. I have to watch that. It was super affordable. It wouldn't have been disappointed, but. Yeah. Yeah, totally, Mrs. Necro. I would totally do a muslin for jeans. I would just sew. What I would do is I would sew the fronts, the backs, the yoke. Uh, the waistband, I would just fold over the waistband like this and then just attach it to the waist. I wouldn't do any finishing, just so it's there. Um, and I would do the fly extension. I would just sew it to one of those center fronts like that. And then the pockets, I would just probably sew shut, but you need the pocket facing lined up to the pocket opening, you know. So, like, if this is the pants and this is your pocket facing so that you can continue your, your waistband it's a really bad example but I think you know what I mean you don't need to have them functional or hemmed or finished just enough so that you can kind of see where everything's doing I'll do it with the Don jeans for sure in my new um, pandemic body I don't know why I'm blaming things on the pandemic because honestly my life didn't change a whole lot because uh, I work alone so cool well this was fun uh welcome to all the new folks here thanks for coming and i really appreciate it so i'll see you tomorrow i'm sewing the pants two pairs shorts and pants on the serger serging the elastic should be good maybe i'll have the slippers done by tomorrow <laughs> so we'll see i would use whatever you don't want mrs necro i'm kind of a fan of using fabric that you don't care about so you don't mind using your sharpie on and drawing on it or cutting into but i also know that for some folks when especially if they're and i don't know where you're at in your sewing journey but i know for me when fabric was like i didn't have a lot of extra fabric um or i just didn't have a lot of time for that i know the appeal of doing the wearable muslin thing but if you're really going for like, this is, I want these jeans to be really fit well and use them for other future projects, <clears throat> you might want to invest because muslin you can get for a dollar a yard, right? Actual muslin. But I use extra fabric left over from my old business that is just, you've seen it in videos and stuff. It just has these dots on it, you know? Um, or maybe of leftover from fabric, like each pant leg could be a different fabric. I would just use something and just remember that whatever you're sewing your jeans in is going to be heavier duty probably. But if it's a stretch denim, that's trickier. If it's a stretch pattern, I mean, you're going to have to use something. Oh, Ray. Oh, my gosh. Where's the alert? Where's the alert box? Did I do it in time? Quick, quick. <laughs> Here. There we go. Yay, Ray, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you. I changed your alert. You want, it's a little kitty cat, just for you. <laughs> Hit the like. Yeah, so the first fitted garment pants. Are you gonna use stretch pattern or non-stretch? Because if you're gonna use stretch, then I would use a fabric with stretch. Or if you can't do that and you're going to use muslin, just remember, fit it pretty close. Fit that thing pretty close to you because the stretch is really going to feel roomy after like, sewing a rigid fabric for a stretch pattern. Just remember that. <laughs> I was trying to end before you did it, Ray. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I'll be doing the Dawn jeans. Maybe that'll help. You can see how I do that. I don't have a pant form. I have me. So that it's tricky to do it. I'm going to do my best. Maybe I'll take pictures and show you what I'm trying to fix on me. Those are always lovely pictures. Okay, so then pick a rigid uh, jean pattern. And I know the um, Morgan jeans by Closet Core Patterns, now known as Closet Core. And I know the Dawn jeans are rigid. What other ones are non-stretch jeans, you guys? Um. <laughs> I can't remember. I feel like there's a third one that's pretty prominent. 
because the mountain views were stretched. We did those. We did the ash. Those were stretch. Ames are stretch. Gingers are stretch. What else have we done? Saffron by Deer and Doe. Those are stretch. So anyway. All right. Well, we can talk about more later. All right. I will uh, talk to you guys tomorrow. Angela Kane. Oh, that's a good suggestion. I will leave eventually. <laughs> Angela Kane. I haven't sewn one of her patterns, but they're supposed to be really good. So, all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hasta mañana, iguanas. <laughs>